I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and this is a vehicle that we have all been waiting for, the new Mazda 3 sedan. Now, you and me were there when the 3 sedan got shown to the world for the first time at the Los Angeles show at the end of last year. We've also driven the Mazda 3 hatchback together here on local roads in Australia, but the sedan was a little bit delayed, but the wait is over. We now have the sedan here in Australia, and I'm ready to tell you all about it. There are, of course, a lot of similarities between this car and the Mazda 3 hatchback, but there actually are a few subtle refinements about the sedan that makes it different and I think better than the hatch. One of those is of course the styling. A lot of people down in the comments have said they prefer the sedan. Let me know what you reckon and while you're down there, make sure you subscribe to Chasing Cars and click that notification bell. But there are actually a couple of little differences underneath the skin that we're gonna go into also. We're also gonna have a look at the interior, both front and back check out the boot and then take this thing out onto the road where, spoiler alert, you're gonna find out why I think this is the best small car that you can currently buy today. Here in the front of the Mazda 3 sedan, things are really just as nice as we found them in the hatchback when we drove that on local roads recently. And if you haven't seen that video, you can click up here to watch it now. But this video is about the sedan and that's what we're gonna talk about. And the first big difference in here is a difference in color. Because you can't get this pure white leather in the hatch, you can only get it in the four door. But on the other hand, you can't get the red leather that you can get in the five door. So if you prefer light colored leather, you'll have to go for the sedan. But if you do, you'll find all those nice soft materials that you get on the hatchback. Impressively, you get those soft materials across the range, apart from the leather steering wheel and shifter, which sadly don't come on the base model. But everything above that, you do get all this nice plush stuff that makes the Mazda 3 feel properly premium. In fact, the whole interior has taken a big step up from the previous generation car, and it is now really a benchmark in this small car class. So you have an 8.8 inch screen up top. It's no longer a touch screen. You can only control it through this rotary dial between the seats, but you now get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Plus all cars have DAB radio and satellite navigation. Top spec cars get niceties like heated seats, but everything shares sort of a decent level of practicality with two fast charging USB ports, two relatively decent sized cup holders, a tray ahead of those and big door bins as well. Here in the back, the Mazda 3 sedan has more room than the hatchback. Because the whole car is longer, perhaps that won't come as a surprise, but it's still good to know. So for myself at six foot, I have an inch or so of headroom. I've got, you know, an inch or so of legroom and tow room is okay. The seat base is pretty supportive and as a whole, it feels a little bit more sort of spacious in here because of this light colored interior though. That's probably what's playing a trick on me. But you do have you know, a few nice features back here. Firstly, all that soft material actually does continue to the back. That's really rare on the small car market these days. You've got air vents, you've got a drop down armrest as well. Two cup holders here. What you don't have is rear seat USB ports, which is a bit of a shame. The thing about the Mazda 3 hatch is that its boot space actually got smaller over the generation that it replaced. That isn't the case on the Mazda 3 sedan. In fact, the sedan got quite a bit longer, which meant more room is in the back as we just saw, and also more boot space. So underneath this traditional sedan boot, there's heaps of room. 444 liters of space to be precise in a nice square wide space. There is a bit of a lip to lift suitcases over, even bigger than on the hatch, but I think you'll be able to live with it. Plus, you've got a special feature in the form of pull tabs that let you drop down those rear seats nice and easily. So, what's the Mazda 3 sedan like to drive? Well, it won't shock you that in many ways it is similar to the Mazda 3 hatchback's driving experiences, but I said up front there are a couple of small differences and we're gonna get to those. But as usual, let's cover off first what's under the bonnet of this vehicle. So at present, you can get two four-cylinder petrol engines in Australia. They're both naturally aspirated. One measures two liters and the other two and a half. So the entry-level engine, the two-liter Skyactiv-G, that makes 114 kilowatts of power and 200 newton meters of torque. And you know, it's adequate if you're just kind of gonna buzz around town. Uh, it's not quick. Um, you wouldn't wanna be pulling out of kind of uh, turns onto highways and having to accelerate really quickly or anything like that. 
but in town it's perfectly fine. The two and a half liter Skyactiv-G, that's what I'm driving now. It has more respectable outputs of 140 kilowatts of power and 250 newton meters of torque. And that's quite a competitive torque figure, but you've got to you know, be careful that when you compare it to turbocharged cars in this segment, like the Volkswagen Golf, Holden Astra and Ford Focus, that torque is made much higher in the rev range. So somewhere around 4,000 RPM, uh, rather than like 1500 RPM in the Golf. So you do have to work it for the money, um, but if you do, you make pretty good progress. And it's hooked up to a decent six-speed torque converter auto. I don't think it's tuned quite as well as the previous Shape Master 3's auto, but it isn't bad. The cool thing is, is that on every grade, you can actually get a beautifully slick six-speed manual gearbox uh, for $1,000 less. And that's certainly what I would be doing, but there's nothing wrong with the auto. Now, this is a front wheel drive car, but you can barely notice when you push on because Mazda have tuned this three sedan so beautifully. What you get is a slightly softer suspension setup than the hatch, and that's actually to the credit of the sedan. You'll remember when I reviewed the hatch, I thought there was just a little bit, you know, too much sort of thump as soon as those 18 inch wheels hit a bump in the road. It was a little bit kind of untoward and unrefined. The sedan, you don't get that. Its bump absorption is perfect from start to finish. The suspension is great. The ride is as good as I've ever experienced in a mainstream small car, if not better. And the finesse about the way this car handles is way beyond a $38,000 car, let alone the fact you can buy into this engineering in the $20,000 range. In fact, I think that it's very much like driving a BMW 3 Series 10 or 15 years ago. The steering is crisp, perfectly weighted, natural. The front end feels glued to the wheel. It just points so well into corners. Now, naturally, the engine isn't you know up there with the 3 Series because it isn't quick. Uh, and it's not turbocharged, but the balance of this car is Bavarian in nature. It's an absolute credit to Mazda's engineers. And you know what? It's not even at the expense of refinement because this is quiet, especially over smooth roads, but even over coarse chip, it's noticeably quieter than the previous car. It's comfortable. Uh, it's just been so long since I drove a car in this price range or even well above that is so low on compromise. It's really, really nicely done. You get all the safety features across the range. However, the top spec car does get a slightly higher package with stuff like a 360 degree camera, but you can actually option up that package on every grade for $1,500. So it's quite democratic. You can get all the safety features even on the base model. And you know, the only thing that you sort of miss is having a real premium engine but Mazda are coming out with the Skyactiv X engine shortly, which is gonna have a supercharger. Now, this isn't gonna be a performance engine. It's gonna be a blend of economy and you know warmer performance, they're saying, but given it'll make similar torque to this two and a half liter lower in the rev range, it should be even more drivable again. So I'm looking forward to trying out that Skyactiv X engine soon. But for now, the two and a half liter Mazda 3, manual gearbox preferably, I'm really not sure that there's anything better for the money right now. And you know, I drive a lot of cars in this class, I drive a lot of cars full stop, and I'm, you know, often reserve that kind of judgment until I really am sure how I feel about something. And that's the position I'm getting to with the Mazda 3 right now. This is a really nicely done car. And the sedan, I think, is the one to go for. So those are my thoughts on the brand new Mazda 3 sedan. Of course, there's lots of choice in the Mazda 3 lineup. You can basically have any grade with either a manual or an automatic and in a hatch or a sedan. But if I myself was buying one of these cars today, it would be basically this one as you see it, though with the manual gearbox for a little bit of extra fun. This is a highly accomplished, refined, new benchmark in the small car segment. And that is a really big deal for Mazda. Now, if you haven't subscribed to Chasing Cars, please do so down below. Click that notification bell so you never miss one of our full-length Australian car reviews. And leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about the Mazda 3 sedan and any suggestions or comments on Chasing Cars. And as always, thanks for watching.